What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about Extrude Tools, a free extension from TIG. And specifically, we're gonna talk about how we can use the Extrude Edges by Rails function in order to create complex shapes inside of SketchUp. Big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this video. If you wanna vote on the next extension that I cover on the channel, make sure to check out that link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Extrusion Tools is a free extension. You can download, it's from TIG, and you can download it at the Sketchication plugin store. I will link to that in the notes down below. But basically what it does is it gives you a number of different tools for creating different extrusions using edges. So this can be really valuable if you don't wanna create something with thickness, but you wanna create a complex shape from some kind of profile. So specifically in this video, I wanted to focus on the first option, which is Extrude Edges by Rails. So this is a tool that basically allows you to set a profile and then it allows you to set a rail that you're gonna use in order to extrude the profile into 3D. So let's give this a look. So what I've got right now is I've got two curves right here. And so when we run this, what this is gonna do is this is gonna ask us to start by selecting a profile curve. That's gonna be the curve that you want to extrude along your 3D shape. So in this case, that's gonna be this piece right here. Well, then it's going to ask for the first rail curve. So that's going to be the rail that we're going to extrude along right here. So then it's going to ask for a second rail curve. We'll look at this more in a second, but sometimes you want another rail on the other side to dictate what's happening with the other side of the shape. If you don't have another rail, just come in here and just click on this first rail again in order to set that up. And then finally, it's gonna ask for a melding profile curve. So that's if you had another profile that you wanted this to turn into on the other side. We don't right now, so we're just gonna click on this curve right here. And then when you do that, it's gonna give you a number of different options. First, it's gonna ask if you wanna reverse the faces, and my answer is yes. Second, it's gonna ask if you want quad faces. I almost always say yes on this one because I don't want all these, di these uh, diagonals in here. So if I click on yes, notice how these become quads or four-sided shapes. Um, it's gonna ask if I wanna erase the original curves. I usually say no on this one. And then we're good to go. So now if I come in here and look at this, I can see that what this did is this took this shape right here and it basically extruded it along this rail. So one thing I wanna note about this is this is only gonna work on curves. So what that means is that's gonna only work, this is only gonna work on geometry that has multiple different edges in it that have been welded into curves. So for example, right now, I've drawn a shape that's just a box, but if I was to try to run this, it's not gonna work because it's not gonna pick up any of these edges as curves, they're just single lines. So what you could do though, is you could come in here and you could select them. And if you have SketchUp 2021, you can right click and click on the button for weld edges. If you don't, you can download the free extension weld from the SketchUp extension store and install that. But basically, if we were to come in here and we were to select these, right click and click on the button for weld edges, then this is gonna pick this up as a curve because it welded this into a curve. So now I can do the same thing that I did before. In order to extrude this, along this path. Now, one thing I do wanna note about this is if you did, for whatever reason, want to extrude just a flat shape in here, there is a workaround for that. And that workaround, and I'm gonna go ahead and right click and explode this curve, that workaround would be if you wanted to take this edge and divide it like this so that it's two segments, and then you wanted to right click and you wanted to weld those together, notice how now this shows up as a curve inside of SketchUp because it has two edges. So now, if we were to run this like this, you can see how we could actually use this to extrude a flat shape. So if you decided for whatever reason you needed to do that, you could definitely do that. So another thing to think about when you're doing this is let's say that you wanted to have multiple curves in here. So let's say you wanted something like this. Well, it's gonna be the same story. If you try to run this right now, it's only gonna extrude one of these. So you're gonna have an incomplete shape. So what you would do is you would do the same thing where you would make sure to weld these two together. So right click weld edges into a single curve. Well then 
if you run this, it's going to work the way that you would expect it to. And so now let's talk a little bit about the multiple rails and the multiple profiles. So at the moment, we've been just taking a profile and extruding it along a path. Well, now let's add another variable to this. Let's come in here and run extrude edges by rails, run the profile curve. Your rail is going to be this rail for both. But then this time when it says select the melding profile curve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this curve right here. And then I'm going to click. It's going to ask if we want to reverse the direction. And in this case, we're going to say no. We do want to reverse the faces. We do want quad faces. And no, I'll erase the original curves. But notice how now what you're getting, you're getting, you're getting a shape that's wider on one side, and then it narrows to match the other curve on the other side. So you can use that second curve in order to control what this shape does on the other side um, inside of your extrusion. So now let's say that we wanted to add a second rail as well. So, and in this case, I'm actually going to draw an arc that goes out a little bit. But now if we were to run this and we were to select this profile right here, this would be our first rail, but this would be our second rail. So we'd click on this right here. That's gonna control what the shape does on the other side. And then this could be our melding profile. And we're gonna say no on reversing the direction, no on reversing faces, yes on quad faces. So you can see how what that does is that gives you an entirely different shape because it's coming in here and it's lofting this across the middle in order to create the shape right here. And so same thing to note is if you want curves that are gonna do multiple different things, so you want them to be made up of different segments, you do wanna make sure that you come in here and you weld the edges on those shapes so that these all act as individual curves. So, whoops. So now I've got a curve, a curve, a curve, and a curve. So now if we were to run this, extrude edges by rails, this would be our profile, this would be our first rail, this would be our second, and this would be our melding profile. And we're going to say no, no, yes, no. And so you can see how when you do that, you can use that to create some really interesting complex shapes. And you can do some kind of cool stuff with this. Like for example, I'll move this guy over a little bit. Notice how if we take a look at this, I'm gonna move this over and then move it back. Notice how you could use this to create some pretty complex extrusions and shapes inside of SketchUp. And so one other example I wanna look at is your curves don't necessarily have to be typical curves. So for example, let's say that we wanted to create maybe like some kind of amphitheater or something like that. Well, what you could do is you could create a bunch of steps. You could select the steps and then you could weld those by right clicking and clicking on weld into a curve as well. So notice how even though this isn't a typical curve, because these all got welded into a single shape, they're gonna act as a curve in your 3D space. And so let's run this at first. We're gonna have to do something to adjust it in a second, but let's look at what it does for right now. So one thing that this tool doesn't do is it doesn't change the orientation of your profile at all when it extrudes it. So if I was to extrude it like this, Notice what it does is it just keeps this shape to this orientation all the way. So in the middle, you get this really nice stair shape, but everything gets kind of like like uh, like crunched up on the edges because this is literally just taking the direction of the shape and keeping it. So what we could do though is we could, and we'll move this off to the side, so we could change the orientation of this shape right here so let's say we wanted this out maybe like 45 degrees. Well, then we could run this and notice how you're still gonna get kind of an odd result, right? So if you run this now, same kind of thing. Notice how it's maintaining that orientation. So over on this side, it's not doing what we want it to do. But we could fix that by adding a melding profile. So. If we were to move this out of the way, 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rotate tool in copy mode and I'm going to use the center point right here and I'm just going to create a copy that follows along here and I'm just going to rotate this so that it's at about 90 degrees it ought to get us close enough for what we're trying to do here but now if we were to take this select this is our profile this is our first rail and our second rail and then this is our melding profile we'll notice how now what that does is that's adjusting the orientation of the object to match the melding profile on the other side. So if you need to create complex steps or something like this, this is a really fast way to do that without having to come in here and model all of that manually. All right, so I will link to some other videos about extrusion tools on this page. Again, big thank you to my supporters on Patreon for voting on this extension. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, uh, maybe you want to support the show, maybe you want to vote on the extension I cover every week, make sure to check out my Patreon page at the link on this page. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.